This is Listen to the Eagle, Alabama. Uh, one of our guests we've had on before that's just a great wealth of knowledge. Uh, joining us tonight, Carrie Bradford, one of the game wardens here in the state of Alabama. Carrie, good evening. Hey, good evening, Dennis. Uh, thank you for having me on again. This is uh, it's always enjoyable, and uh, you know it's um, one of our goals to, to educate um, you know hunter and fishermen, uh, you know those who enjoy the great outdoors, to, to educate them as best we can, um, and uh, and pass on that information so that they can uh, do it ethically and um, and have fun and enjoy uh, the great outdoors. You know, you bring up a point of education, and this is something that when when I talk with people all the time, that it, just because you you learned how to hunt the way your grandfather taught you uh, growing up as a kid doesn't mean it's that the way that it was done 20, 30, 40 years ago is the way that it, it some things should be done now. Uh, the laws change, and, and you and I, when we were speaking today, talked a little bit about uh, some things that, that may be uh, coming up in the upcoming Alabama legislative session, uh, in the current session, uh, that may be affecting uh, hunters across the state of Alabama. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, I would like to, to first, um, you know, point your, your your viewers or your listeners to uh, to um, the Alabama Legislative Information System online. It, we kind of call it Allison, A L I S O N. If they Google that. Um, uh, on the internet, they, that will take them to the legislative information system. And if they know a House bill or, or a Senate bill, um, they can actually track it online and see whether you know these bills are introduced by um, representatives and senators. And uh, they will go into committee, um, and they can follow that that process uh, and the progress or lack of progress of, of these bills, um, so they might become an act, and then later. Uh, you know, a law. So uh, some of the changes, I guess, that are some, not some of the changes, I shouldn't say that, but, but some of the bills that uh, have been introduced or sponsored by uh, representatives or senators, um, we have one that uh, that increases the fine for uh, for uh, transporting live feral swine. It is against the law to trap wild hogs or feral swine on a piece of property and transport them and release them on another, or just to transport them live from that property is a violation of the law. So we're looking at uh, a bill that would increase uh, the fine for that. Um, there's a bill that um, <clears throat> has been uh, introduced, I guess, to increase the uh, the, uh, the cost of the duck stamp. I believe it's a $5 increase. Um, I'm not really familiar with these bills, but uh, your viewers and listeners can go to that website and and they can read up on them and, and, and track them and get involved with the, uh, the process. You know, they can call their, their representatives and, and senators and, and voice their opinion, so to speak. Uh, another one, excuse me, another one that I'm familiar with is uh, a change in the fee structure for um, the wildlife exhibitors. These, these folks that, that, you know, have wildlife that, you know, may take them and exhibit them for educational purposes or things of that nature. Um, then there's a change to the fee structure. Um, there's uh, there's one that, that also talks about uh, either allowing or disallowing netting on the Tennessee River. I know that's, that's a, a bill that um, has been introduced. And then one um, also is an increase in the fine for persons hunting without landowner permission. Somebody uh, goes hunting on the land of another without having that landowner's permission um, the fine now currently is is a thousand dollars on first offense, and this would increase that, I believe, um, to fifteen hundred. I'm not really sure, but uh, those are some of the bills that that I have uh, been made aware of that are actually, you know, have been introduced. They have to be read three times. They go into committee. You know, all those, all that uh, that process uh, has to take place before these bills will actually become a law that will be enforceable, say, by next hunting season. Well, and that's, Carrie, that's something I was going to ask. I mean, the process that, that it takes to get these bills into law, you know, you kind of read that out. Looking ahead, I mean, I know we, you don't have a crystal ball, but do you have any idea of, of the bills that were listed? Are all of them likely to pass? Is there some opposition to any of these? I mean, what what can what should we expect in reality 
uh, based on the, on what's been uh, introduced into the legislature? Well, it's, it is a very in-depth process. You know, our, our, our representatives and our senators, they have, uh, you know, a lot of bills to look over. These bills will go into a committee, and, you know, the committee, excuse me, I mean, the uh, committee will review these bills, and, and there's no telling how many bills will be in a certain committee. They may not even get a chance to be read a second time, or, you know, these bills could literally go into committee, be read a second time, and not ever be read a third time and not come up for a vote, a vote excuse me. So it may be that these, these bills don't actually even get a chance to, to make it to the floor for a vote. Um, and that's why I encourage, uh, you know, your viewers and listeners to, to go to that website and they can, I believe there's going to be a, a session of the, the Senate and the House this week. Um, so they can go in there and, and kind of track the, the uh, you know, the progress uh, of these particular bills. And and for folks that are watching online, we we are showing the link now, uh, the the website, and we've just tweeted that link out as well. So if you follow us on Twitter, you can get the link to Allison uh, that Carrie's referring to. Carrie, you also mentioned today when we discussed um, about turkey season and reporting. Now this is something it, it, it maybe is I guess maybe not as familiar to turkey hunters as it is deer hunters. Explain to me what what it exactly you were talking about today about reporting. That's right. Well, you know, the state um, last year, um, you know, we instituted a game check system. Uh, the game check system, and, and you, you might have, hopefully you'll be able to show a link to that as well. But um, the game check system is voluntary right now. But what we would like hunters to do is, is when they do harvest either a buck or a gobbler, uh, you know, it's mandatory by law for them to write it down on their harvest record. But it is voluntary for them to call it in and basically what we call register or um, call in that information. They can do it online. They can do it uh, through a smartphone. Uh, there's three different ways that they can get that information to us and, and so that we can keep up with that data. That, that data is very important. You know, over the southeast right now, um, you know, there's a, there seems to be a trend in um, – you know, a decrease in the turkey population. And for us to be able to accurately track that, uh, it's very beneficial to have that information of hunter harvest, uh, hunter success. And we actually even have an avid turkey hunter survey um, for turkey hunters that, that get out there and, and, you know, chase these turkeys five to seven days a week or whatever. They can go on there and fill out this survey and, and tell us of their experiences, whether it's they had a lot of success. They didn't see a lot of birds. The birds were gobbling. They weren't gobbling. Um, <clears throat> and that helps us, you know, uh, set harvest, you know, recommendations and things of that nature. So uh, it's very important for those hunters to, number one, by law, they have to write down every male turkey, every gobbler, whether it's a jake or a mature uh, bird, they have to write that down on their turkey harvest record just as if they would a buck. But it is voluntary for them to uh, basically either log on to the computer or to call it in. But we really uh, encourage hunters to do that. We need that information. We've got uh, 24 days left of, of turkey hunting season. It, it does go out at the end of April. We didn't end it 10 days like some, some of the counties had uh, in deer season. So turkey season does go out at the end of April. Okay. Um, and I think that we have around 1,000 birds uh, recorded on that game check system right now. We feel that's, that's uh, you know, a little bit low. So, um, you know, we just would really appreciate and encourage folks, uh, hunters, to, to go in there and to log in. It doesn't take but just maybe, I think, uh, it takes about three minutes uh, or less than three minutes to, to pass that information uh, along to us. And it's just... Uh, it's very valuable information. Well, and, and that, you know, again, like you talked about at the beginning of the segment, the, the education part of this, and it's just good knowledge to be able to share that kind of information with everybody. And, and I know it, it just benefits the entire state uh, getting that information. We also tweeted that link out as well. So, again, if you're following us on okay. Twitter, at Eagle Alabama, we put the link to the uh, – to the turkey game check system and to Allison there as well. And of course, uh, uh, if it, people need more information about really anything related to, to conservation in the state, uh, hunting and fishing in the state, uh, out, is, is OutdoorAlabama.com really the, the best website to go to? Yes, they can go to OutdoorAlabama.com. 
uh, that's our department website, and it, it will give them whether it's a fisheries question or whether it's a uh, wildlife question, whether it's a law enforcement question, whatever it is, they can navigate through that website and, and find the contact number. Um, they can call and actually talk to a, a real person, <laughs> which is hard to do these days <laughs> with all these numbers. But, uh, Absolutely. And, uh, anyway, they'll take that information and, and, you know, if it's a game warden question or, you know, conservation enforcement officer, uh, they'll pass that along and, and uh, you know, their local officer will, will call them back. Carrie, thanks so much for your time. Uh, I know we'll be talking again in the future. And yeah, go ahead. If you don't, if you don't mind, I have one more thing that I wanted to bring up. Sure, um, yeah, go ahead. April, yeah, April the tenth. You know, we've got the the uh, the National Archery in Schools. The we've got our state tournament uh, down in Montgomery on on uh, April the tenth. So we're going to have around twelve hundred shooters from from high schools and middle schools that are going to be down there. Uh, shooting for the state championship in wow. Montgomery, so that's the that's, that's huge. a big event for us, for the department, and for the the local schools. Um, Is that open to the public, know, where folks can come see that? That will be open to the public. I know that there's they're going to be blocking off some of the parking down there at the uh, the Crampton Bowl um, okay. down in Montgomery. And it's it's going to be over there, and if uh, if folks um, you know enjoy you know archery shooting, this is something that we've. Uh, instituted or incorporate into our, um, you know, our school system and athletics, and and they can go and, and shoot for a state championship, just like a, you know, the football or baseball or basketball championship. This is going to be the archery championship in Montgomery, uh, April the tenth. That's fantastic, Kerry. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk again soon. Thank you, Dennis. You'll have a good evening. You too. Kerry Bradford uh, from the Alabama Department of Conservation, uh, Game Warden. Appreciate Kerry joining us. For the best in hunting and fishing talk, join us for Listen to the Eagle live every Monday night at 6 p.m. Central.